What's going on guys? Derek here from Wilson Audio Labs. Today we're going to look at a new amp line from Soundstream. In particular, the Tarantula Extreme Power. These are really cool looking amps. And you can see here they have one two channel version, one four channel version, and four mono blocks. We're going to look at the TXP1.6000D, which is one kind of in the middle. I picked this one up off of eBay. Uh, at the time, it wasn't available on Amazon or I couldn't find it anywhere else. So I got one in, and here are the ratings. 700 watts at 4 ohms, 1200 watts at 2 ohms, 2300 at 1 ohm. All right, so here's the amp. comes in a really cool looking box. We will talk about that later. Inside the box, you get the manual, you get a warranty card, and then you get the base knob with the remote base cable. It is a plastic base knob, and it does not have a clip light. It does have a power light. And then you have some hardware here for mounting the amplifier, and these are the little mounting feet so that you can screw the amp down. And here's the amplifier. Yes, right off the bat, super, super cool looking design. And we will peel off the protective coating here for this acrylic. It is smoked acrylic. It looks so cool. I was just drooling over the look of these amps. Awesome. I really like it when amp manufacturers do something different. Amps always look the same, black, gray, you know, whatever. These just look really cool, showing the guts from the top. I'm a big fan so far. On the one side of the amp here, we have speaker outputs. These are eight gauge. We also have protect, clip, and power LEDs. Then the remote connection for the bass adjustment. Also, we have bass boost, which includes frequency and level. We have a gain control. And then we have a low and a high pass crossover. So this is a full range amp if you want it to be, or you can have it just to be a bass amp. And then on the far side, we have input and output. There's a single RCA in, a single RCA out. Wish they did a little different. On the other side, we have four gauge for power and ground, which in my opinion is not enough for a 2000 watt or more amplifier. As far as measurements go, 8.25 inches by 5.25 inches. And then it's a little bit taller than most amps, 2.75 inches or 70 millimeters. Again, I can't get over just the look of these amps. Solid aluminum here on this one end. We'll show more when we get to the part of the video where I open it up and show you what the guts look like, things like that. I'll show the amp lit up and all that fun stuff as well. So first, let's get the amp hooked up on the bench so we can take a look at it. Powered up. does have a fan inside to help keep it cool. And here is the light for the tarantula. And unfortunately, as you can tell here, the LEDs are not bright enough to light up the guts, which is a big bummer because that is one of the things of this amp I was looking forward to, just having that cool blue look of the amp. So they kind of failed there. I have heard from Soundstream they're going to fix that, hopefully in future models, get the LED nuts. shining better. <laughs> So now let's check out the amp at 4 ohms. Got the good old amp dyno fired up. We are rated 700 watts at 4 ohms. We're going to try the test at 40 hertz. And yes, sir, 811 watts at 14.54 volts. All right, I must say that's a good start. If we're already getting better than rated power at the 4 ohm rating, that is not usual for a uh, Epsilon amp, I must say, but I'm excited here. Okay, so uncertified up to clipping, 824 watts, 14.31. Again, well above the 700 watt rating. So we like this, like to see you get a little bit more than what you pay for, or at least get what you pay for. In this case, you get a little bit more, so that's good. Dynamic, sends a pulse tone into the amp at 40 hertz. And yeah, dynamic power, 40 hertz, we got 839 watts, 14.64 volts. So again, did very good. Now let's talk about the efficiency. 80% uh, efficient is what we measured uh, on the certified test. Next up, let's set the amp dyno to the two ohm load. Amplifier is rated 1200 watts. Doesn't tell us the voltage, the frequency, anything like that, but we always do 40 Hertz. Here we go. 1341 we beat rated 14.38 volts yes right makes you feel like dancing so excited to see something do rated power a little bit more 
It's an exciting day here on the Amp Dino. Let's try Uncertified. It takes us up to the clipping point. And yes, check this out. 1,468 watts. 14.14. Well above the rated power. Again, virtual applause in the background. Or you can just clap if you want to. Dynamic power sends a dynamic tone into the amplifier. 40 hertz burst. Kind of like your mama kicks you. Like a kick drum. You big dummy. Almost 1,600 watts at 14.7. Now the efficiency dropped off slightly. 70% efficient at 2 ohms. All right, now real quick before the 1 ohm test, smash that like button because I know you guys appreciate this content. Also, check below for my new merch, Wilson Audio. Buy you a t-shirt, hoodie. It's all good quality stuff. Now, let's move on to the 1 ohm test. The amp is rated 2,300 watts. According to the website on the manual, it says 2,350, so we'll go with 2,300. Here we go, 2,046. Uh-oh. <laughs> Yes, it was a bit of a bummer. I really thought that we were gonna get above the rated power. Oh well, let's try uncertified. Again, 40 hertz is our test tone. And so close, look at that, 2276. Our voltage dropped just a little bit. So I think we would get 2300 if we were able to keep 14.4. Now let's try dynamic, see if we're able to get that 2300 watts dynamically with a 40 hertz pulse tone and yes, easily over 25, 2668 watts at 14.46. So a little bit of a bummer there on the certified test. This amp doesn't say it's rated to 1% THD, so I guess we could give them a little bit of a break. But what we did here is we also tried this test again just to make sure, and we do this multiple times, we just don't always show you. 2051 watts, so virtually the same as what we got before. Now, we pulled about 70% efficiency when we did the calculations. So, yeah, not too bad at 1 ohm. Here is all the results of all the amp dyno tests. You're welcome to pause this. We just showed you most of them. There are some additional tests I'm going to show at the very end of the video after the credits. So make sure you stick around if you want to see that. Next up, we're going to hook it up to the Savard High Q subs and see if it bumps. All right, time for three kinds of bass. guys so i was smiling listening to this amp on the subwoofers just like i am smiling looking at the design i really liked it, it did well now we had the FLIR thermal camera hooked up here and uh yeah the amp with this whole huge aluminum heat sink it just did not get that hot so you can see the warmest part there is some of the speaker output uh, transistors and they got a little warm but still not very bad at all now we took off these two smoked acrylic panels on the top and like, well, you kind of see inside, you can see a 100 volt, 2200 uh, microfarad cap there, but you can't see a whole lot. So we took this one end panel off and then it's, well, it's like, wow, is this thing milled from one piece of aluminum? <laughs> it kind of looks like it is. So the board just is slid in and you can't really see the entire circuit board because of the way uh, they have it mounted in there. And I didn't want to pull the whole amp out and everything, but they do have... Soundstream does have a picture I'll show you in a minute, but the other interesting part 
is they say it was designed to engineer the United States of America made in the People's Republic of China. However, I showed this to Sam, and he's like, oh, this looks a lot like the Evo Sound Digital. And sure enough, if you look at the two, they're very close in design. So it has been confirmed that some of the Sound Digitals have been copied, and there are versions out there that look like these old Sound Digital designs. But anyway, let's move to the back of the box where they have some funnies. One ohm minimum impedance monoblock up to 1.21 gigawatts, Marty. Silicon steel alloy core power trans supply transformers and flux capacitors. Just all kind of funny stuff here on the back. Variable level and frequency. Base boost to knock your socks off. Dash mount gain control module included. Feel the flow. You know, all kind of funny stuff. So you have to check those out. Read all those if you want to. Funny stuff. Make you smile. Let's talk about the good stuff of the amp. First off, it looks super cool. Can't get over that. Thick aluminum heat sink, small size, budget price, high and low pass crossovers. It does include a bass knob, adjusting your bass from the front seat. Has good bass output. I like the sound quality. Power output at 4 and 2 ohms, meet and exceeded the rated power. Now what could be better? 4 gauge power and ground. You really need 1 alt for anything over 2,000 watts in my opinion. Single 8 gauge speaker output. It would be nice to have a couple outputs. Single RCA input and output, again, it would be nice to have two inputs, two outputs. The bass remote has a cheap feel. The LEDs don't light up these nuts. Also, the power output at one ohm could be a little bit better. Wasn't too bad, but not quite there certified. And this is, appears to be a Chinese knockoff of a Sound Digital, which Sound Digital makes good amps. But uh, yeah, we're not real sure the Chinese are going to be able to make one that's going to be as long lasting as those. But overall, I appreciate you guys watching as always. Hope this, this was a fun video. I really like the look of this amp. It sounded great on the subwoofers. No complaints there. So uh, I think Soundstream may have a hit here with this series. Check me out on patreon.com slash oldschoolstereo. You get early access to the videos. Appreciate you guys for supporting me there. Thumbs up on the video here. Subscribe if you like the content. Special thanks, Stuart, Travis, Jesus, Tomcat, Big D. I'm out of here. All right, so since this amp is a full range amplifier, we decided to test at one kilohertz to see if we can get that 2300 watts at one ohm certified. And sure enough, look at this. We got 2308 certified 14.14 volts so we also went ahead and ran the other tests as well we'll do the super quick change there <laughs> try it uncertified up to clipping and the voltage dropped just a little bit more on this one so the power is virtually identical 2307 one less watt 14.14 and then we'll try the dynamic test which honestly one kilohertz dynamic test is, doesn't really mean a whole lot to me because, uh, yeah, it's just a, a tone that I can't imagine anybody would ever use. But uh, 2,728 watts, so they're pretty good. Now, next up, what I did was I decided to just change, try a different frequency. So I tried 100 hertz. So most of the time the bass tests are done at 40 hertz, but we bumped it up to 100 to see if we get that 2,300 watts. And sure enough, 2,373 at 14.19. So it did its rated power just at different frequencies. Now, if you guys like this test and want to see me test the four channel version of this amp, leave a comment below, let me know, because maybe I'll do that for you. Again, Big D, I'm signing out. Thanks again for watching.